Hello, I'm Dr. Mike Shi in the Department of Physiatry at Kaiser Permanente. This video will give you key information about how to heal from your back pain. First of all, let's identify some red flags. These are signs that something more serious might be going on. Unexplained weight loss. Unexplained fevers, chills, or night sweats. A personal history of cancer. A significant loss of strength in one or both legs. Loss of feeling that is getting steadily worse. New difficulty in holding or releasing your urine or stool. Pain that has steadily worsened for more than three months. Significant trauma, such as falling hard on your buttock or getting into a car accident. New back pain while taking oral steroids like prednisone or dexamethasone. More than 70 years of age with new back pain. Pain while sleeping that is worse than any other time during the day. If you have any of these, please consult your primary care provider immediately. Provided that you do not have any red flags, let's start with two take-home points. Number one, there is nothing seriously wrong with your back. It is very, very unlikely that you have any serious nerve damage, fracture, cancer, infection, or any other underlying disease. Number two, most of your back pain is under your control. This includes specific exercises, correct posture, good sleep, a moderate amount of movement, and a healthy attitude. You might be wondering, well, if nothing is seriously wrong with my back, then why do I hurt? The answer is a combination of two factors. The tissues, such as the bones, the joints, the ligaments, and the discs, and your brain. Let's look at what happens to the tissues during the normal, healthy aging process. First, the discs begin to dry up. The disc is like a jelly-filled shock absorber between the bones of the spine. As we age, the liquid from the jelly seeps into the outer fibers of the disc. The fibers start to weaken and bulge, and the jelly starts to disappear. This is why we normally begin to shrink in height in our late 30s, and lose about two inches by the time we're 70. Finally, because there is less shock absorption, the bone grows broader to absorb more pressure, resulting in vertebral bone spurs. The name for this process is degenerative disc disease, which simply means normal aging of the discs, and often does not cause any pain. Another thing that starts to happen is, because of the loss of disc height, the joints in the back of the spine, called facet joints, start feeling more and more pressure, and so they develop bone spurs as well. This is called facet joint arthropathy, or facet joint hypertrophy. Again, these are normal features of aging, and often do not cause pain. So how can all these things happen to the spine without causing pain in the vast majority of cases? The reason is because while these things are slowly happening to the tissues, the brain is able to adapt. Things like good sleep, regular movement, and a positive attitude help the brain adapt to these changes. Imagine a 16-year-old kid who's never had back pain or joint pain ever before. Then consider a normal 50-year-old who already has some of these age-related changes in their spine but also doesn't have any significant pain. Now imagine that one day the 16-year-old kid wakes up in the 50-year-old's body suddenly he would hurt all over the place. This is because his brain didn't have those 30 odd years to adapt to the slow and steady changes that happen to the body. The brain is an amazing organ that adapts to new information extremely quickly, but in order to learn and adapt well to new information, we need good sleep, regular exercise, and a positive attitude, just like what kids need to excel in school. As long as we give our brains these key ingredients, we can adapt to the normal aging process and extinguish the signals coming from our back. This is why the vast majority of people with degenerative disc disease or facet joint hypertrophy do not experience any back pain. So we looked at what normally happens to our spines as we age and how our brain adapts to this process to prevent pain. What about when we do have back pain? What's going on there? First, let's look at what can go wrong in the tissues of the spine. Remember the disc that's filled with jelly. In Western society, 
we spend a great deal of time sitting, bending forward between 0 and 90 degrees, or lifting with our hands far out in front of us. Conversely, we don't spend nearly as much time walking, bending backwards, or looking up at the sky like our ancestors did. As a result, we end up putting too much pressure on the front of the disc, shoving jelly towards the back of the disc. Over time, the jelly weakens those back fibers, and it doesn't take much but the last straw on the camel's back, so to speak, and some of that disc jelly pops through, resulting in a disc tear and potentially a disc herniation. This is usually intensely painful. A typical scenario would be, you bend over to pick something off the floor, it could even be a paper clip or a pencil, and BAM, you're in the worst pain you've ever had, unable to even move due to severe back pain. If the herniated jelly irritates a nerve, the pain may radiate into the buttock or leg, resulting in what we call sciatica. The first thing to do in this situation is to push as much jelly back inside as you can and to close the disc tear to let it heal. Now, if you have two or more of these symptoms, chances are the disc tear is still open. The pain is worse first thing in the morning. The pain is worse with even the slightest bending, like bending over the sink. Coughing or sneezing makes the pain a lot worse. Sitting is very painful. If this scenario closely resembles your situation, then click on this link for specific instructions on how to recover quickly. Even after recovering from an episode like this, there are some residual changes that make the disc more vulnerable to being injured again. First of all, even after the tear has healed, the jelly is still sitting close to the back edge of the disc. Secondly, the injured segment of the spine is now the weakest part of the spine. Like a coat hanger that's been bent in the middle, it's more likely to keep buckling at that weak spot. If you've recently recovered from an episode of back pain, or if you tend to get frequent repeated episodes of severe back pain, click on this link for specific instructions on how to prevent this from happening again. Finally, if there are one or two discs that have lost a significant amount of jelly, arthritis can set in early in the corresponding facet joints which in some cases can cause back pain. If the overgrown facet joints and ligaments encroach upon the nerves, the pressure on the nerves can sometimes cause pain as well. In these cases, the pain feels better when sitting down, but then, because of excessive sitting, the hip flexor muscles get tight and pull the spine into a forward bent position, causing strain on the back muscles. In these cases, the pain is typically worse the longer you are on your feet. The pain can be worse when standing up from a seated position. The pain feels better when leaning over a shopping cart or a walker. The pain is quickly relieved when sitting back down. If this scenario closely resembles your situation, then click on this link for specific instructions on how to naturally manage this pain. Now regardless of which of these situations fits your pain the best, or even if none of these three scenarios describes your situation, you can still benefit from the following advice. Avoid prolonged sitting or standing. Change positions at least every 30 minutes. Regardless of whether you're sitting or standing, your earlobes should be directly above your shoulders, your shoulders directly above your hips, and your eyes should be level with an imaginary line a third of the way down from the top of your computer screen. Sometimes a kneeling chair is better for those with sensitive discs. When lifting something, bend at the knees and hips, not at the spine, and carry the object as close to your waist as possible. Stretch your hip flexors and your hamstrings, as shown in these links. This way your legs are less likely to crank on your spine. Keep moving. A reasonable goal is to take 10,000 steps a day. Regardless of what the problem is with your spine, your spine needs a moderate amount of movement every day to stay healthy. So we spent a whole lot of time talking about the tissues. What about the brain? Research shows that the following factors get in the way of overcoming back pain. Narcotics. Otherwise known as opiates or opioids, these are medications like Norco, Vicodin, Tylenol with codeine, Percocet, Morphine, Oxycodone, Dilaudid, Emiscontin, and Oxycontin. 
These medications prevent the brain from naturally adapting to the pain. So in the long run, you end up with more pain than if you simply avoided these medications altogether. Negative stress. One of the most important reasons why the brain doesn't adapt is because of stress from one's relationships at work or at home, particularly if you are constantly being put down. Poor sleep. The brain needs restful sleep to adapt to new situations, and back pain is no exception. Unfortunately, benzodiazepine sleep aids such as Xanax, Valium, and Clonopin, along with the previously mentioned narcotics, actually prevent the brain from getting restful sleep. Incorrect beliefs about pain. There are three especially damaging beliefs that prevent the brain from adapting. The first is catastrophizing. This is the idea that something must be terribly wrong with your back because you hurt so much, or that it's just going to get worse and worse. Fear of movement. Movement is essential for overcoming back pain because it stimulates your brain to create new pathways and learn how to adapt. If you're afraid that movement will cause you more pain, you will deprive your brain of the necessary stimulation to overcome your pain. Feeling like the pain is out of your control that there's nothing you can possibly do on your own to help your pain. So what can you do to optimize your brain's ability to overcome back pain? Avoid narcotics and benzodiazepines. Address any situations where you're constantly being put down or bullied. Sometimes leaving is the only option. Follow good sleep habits. First, try these simple things. If they don't work, Ask your doctor about gabapentin or trazodone, or try herbal remedies such as melatonin or valerian root. Remind yourself that millions of people have successfully overcome back pain, and with the help of the information in this video, so can you. Let your body move. A reasonable goal is 10,000 steps a day. This will give your brain enough stimulation so that it knows how to adapt to the changes in your spine. It may take weeks or months to get to this goal, but you can do it. Finally, let's review the main take-home points of this video. Number one, there is nothing seriously wrong with your back. As long as you don't have any of the red flags mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's very, very unlikely that you have any nerve damage, fracture, cancer, infection, or any other underlying disease. Number two, most of your back pain is under your control. This includes specific exercises, correct posture, good sleep, a moderate amount of movement, and a healthy attitude. Thank you for listening, and if you found this information helpful, please share with others. Take care.